Okay, so to cope with the problem of having an, an exponential number of combinations of features, there are some algorithms that have been designed that run in n square complexity instead of an exponential complexity. And the basic idea is to add or delete one of the features at a time. And in the first approach, uh, we add features each time. This uh, approach is forward search. So the procedure starts with no variables at all, no features at all, and progressively you incorporate one feature at a time, always calculating or estimating the error for this uh, for the model using these different subsets of features, and you will keep adding features as long as you see that the performance is improving. When you see that the performance is not improving anymore, then uh, the algorithm is finished. And you, you can do the same, but in the opposite direction. This is called backward search. In that algorithm, you start with all your features in the initial set, and you start deleting one feature at a time, always uh, again uh, calculating the error of each of these combinations of features and just stop when the performance is not getting better. So as an algorithm it would look like that in the case of forward search you initialize your set of features with the empty set with no features and then what you will do it will be um, to add one of the features, this index i will run for 1 to n, where n is the number of features. So if a given feature i is not in the set, uh, or does not belong to the set f, then you will create a set that will contain the union of the current set f, which initially is empty, and the, uh, the union of this with the feature that you are considering at that moment. So if you suppose that you have uh, four features, then in this step you will have four uh, sets fi. Each of these will contain only one feature. So the set f1 will contain only the feature 1, the set f2 will contain only the feature 2, and so on. So the idea is that once you have created these initial sets, in this case four, four sets, you use uh, some version of cross-validation, the, the one that you prefer to use, to evaluate which of this set of features, uh, which of these gives the, 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 better, the best performance. Okay. Then once you have done that, you set F to be the best feature subset, the best Fi that you generated. And then you run again this step by adding a mm -hmm. new uh, feature to the to the current f which at that time suppose that in the first run the feature one was the best one then this f will contain in the second run it will contain only the feature one then you will create other sets containing one and feature two feature one and feature three and so on so in the end you select and output the best the best feature subset that was evaluated during the entire search procedure. So graphically, uh, it is very easy to understand following this uh, graph. Like you start with uh, your four features and none of them are in the set F, so the set is empty. And you create in the first uh, step, you create four different sets, four different subsets. One of them will contain the first feature the second subset will contain the second feature, the third subset will contain the third feature, and the fourth subset will contain the fourth feature. You train your model using cross-validation, considering only one, the first feature, and you write down the performance for that uh, set of features. You repeat the same with feature two, and for feature three, and for feature four, and then you select uh, the set of features with the highest performance. So suppose that the best one we was uh, the uh, subset containing 
only feature two. In the next step, from this uh, node, if you see as a, as a graph, you are now in this node, then you need to see the possible next combination. So one combination will be adding feature one, and you will have a subset with feature one and two, or you can add feature three, and then you will create the subset containing features two and three, or you can add feature four, and you will have this subset. So again, you will train these three new, uh, using these three uh, new uh, subsets, you will train your model, calculate the, the performance, and if any of these three subsets is better than the previous one, then that is going to be now the, the best subset of features. So suppose that the best one was this here, then you have only two more possibilities to add feature one or to add feature four. Train for feature for this subset and for this subset and you take the one with the best performance. Suppose that at this point uh, nor this one nor this one have a uh, better performance than than feature two and three, then at that time, at that moment you, you stop the algorithm and you output that the best subset for your problem is uh, the subset of features with uh, feature 2 and feature 3. That is in the case of forward search. The case of backward search would be exactly the same but in the opposite direction, direction. So you will start here with every feature in your subset and then you will try different versions deleting one feature only and uh, you will keep deleting features until you see that the performance is not improving. So in the case of backward search, backward search starts with F containing all your features and then repeatedly you delete features one at a time until you reach the set, the empty set. Of course, the idea is that you will uh, stop before deleting all your features. Both of these methods, both of these wrapper uh, methods work quite well. However, they can be computation expensive, as uh, we have said before, given that they need to make many calls to your learning algorithm. So suppose that you are training a polynomial of degree five you will need to train this polynomial as many times as needed as you go trying different subsets of, of features. Now, the second family of methods are called filter methods. Uh, the positive things of these methods is that they easily scale to very high dimensional data sets. Uh, because you just need to run this only one time. So they are computational, simple and fast, and they are independent of the classification algorithm or the regression algorithm that you are using, you're, you're trying to solve. Because you just run these algorithms, these filter methods as pre-processing uh, steps in your machine learning problem. So feature selection needs to be performed only once and then different classifiers can be evaluated with the selected uh, set of features. Negative points is that they ignore the interaction with the classifier because we are not using the classifier to select them, we are just using another uh, function that we would see later on to score which features uh, are more important for for uh, the problem. So they are often univariate or low variate. This means that each feature considered is considered separately, thereby ignoring feature dependencies, which may lead to worse classification performance when compared to other types of feature selection techniques. So when we run this filter method, suppose that you have five features, you give an evaluation or a score to each of these five features. You rank them from the highest from the to the lowest score 
and then you select the top maybe the top three the top four depending on your problem but you always uh, consider each of these features as separate variables and uh, when you use wrapper methods these wrapper methods can create combinations of these features uh, during the process of training the model so that's why they say here they these features are used or evaluated separately and sometimes it could happen that combining two features create a third feature that gives more information or, or at least it makes it easier for the model to find the best parameters but this cannot be done here because you evaluate each feature at a time so features uh, filter feature selection algorithms give heuristic but computational less, exp less expensive ways of choosing a feature subset so the idea as i said is to compute some simple score of each feature i that measures how informative each of these xi features is about the class labels y then we simply pick the k features the top features with the largest scores one possible choice of the score would be defined by s to be the correlation between the feature xi and the label y as measured on the training data so we will choose the features that are the most strongly correlated or statistically correlated uh, with the class labels um, so here uh, we can talk about ranking methods so they assess the importance or relevance of each variable with respect to the output by using univariate measure um, measures of relevance they they are uh, several of uh, of them the most commonly used i for are for example the pearson correlation which degraded uh, the more relevant so if this correlation is, is greater then we will consider that that feature is more relevant to the problem this uh, assumes linear dependency between the uh, features and the labels significance p-value of a hypothesis test in this case the lower the more relevant which aims at detect the genes that split well the data set for example in cases of uh, bioinformatic data sets you can also use parametric t-test or non-parametric like Wilcon Wilcoxon test that um, some of these have been proposed already in different literature another uh, very common measure is uh, measure of relevance is the mutual information mutual information comes from entropy uh, for information theory and here uh, the greater the mutual information is the more relevant the feature will be so after the univariate assessment the method ranks the variable the features in a decreasing order or relevance these methods are fast so they run in complexity linear and their output is intuitive and easy to understand at the same time they disregard redundancies and higher order interaction between variables as i said these these uh, measures um, are applied to each single feature and sometimes combination of features can improve the performance but this cannot be detected here because these higher order interactions between them are not uh, are not considered in this uh, process so in the case of the mutual information that as i said is a, a very common uh, measure of relevance the formula is, is the following so in practice um, well this is called the mutual information and you apply this between uh, pairs of feature and the label and for a specific feature i you will need to compute here in this formula we are assuming that uh, the feature could take value 0 or 1 
and also that the label could be could take values between uh, could be take values whether it's zero or, or one and just simply compute uh, the joint probability of the occurrence of x i and y and you will divide that uh, probability by the product of the probability of x i only times the probability of, of y only uh, once you have divided these two factors you compute the logarithm and then you multiply it again by this the joint probability these probabilities can be estimated from this data set so you will compute how many times you have uh, the feature i happening at the same time that the label one is happening and for all the, the possibilities of x i and, and y so this uh, can be very easily implemented just by counting the number of cases in which each of these variables is taking values zeros or ones so in this case as i said this equation assumes that x i and y are binary valued more generally the summations will be over the domains of the variables Moreover, the probabilities, this joint probability and this probability of xi and probability of y can all be estimated according to their empirical distributions on the training set. So as I explained, you can compute this just uh, by counting the number of cases that appear in your data set. Another uh, very uh, practical way to filter the features is uh, using principal component analysis or PCA. This is a very popular method. Uh, in this case is uh, for linear dimensionality reduction. So the idea here is that uh, you can project the data from the original space into a lower dimensional space in an unsupervised manner. So the idea of PCA is to, to see uh, each ex example as a point in some higher dimension and then looking at the cloud formed by all the data sets you're trying to discover those directions or so uh, those dimensions in which the data is more separated so they are more spread out and the idea is that if you can work the data in this dimension there will be uh, a higher probability to do a, a better classification or regression as opposed to dimensions in which the data is really close to each other they are very dense packed in, in a small region so each of the original dimensions is an axis uh, however uh, one thing of this method is that you can create or the method can discover new axes as linear combinations of the original ones and this is important to consider because uh, these axes can uh, cannot have a, a real meaning in the in the problem um, I, I will try to explain that in the next slide but um, also it is important to know that all these axes that are computed by PCA are orthogonal to each other so what I was trying to explain is suppose that you have points in, in two dimensions so dimension X and dimension Y maybe we're talking about the height and the, uh, the, the weight of an animal and then uh, if you plot the points you 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 have this cloud of points and PCA is going to discover that in this direction of vector V1 the points are more uh, dispersed and this will be considered that the first component the first uh, eigenvector and the second eigenvector the second component will be one that is orthogonal to the one the first one and this is this v2 so what pca is going to tell you is okay we need to look at the data in this axis here v1 and this second axis v2 
instead of axis x and y so the point here is that it is good that the algorithm can, can discover these these directions but you need to consider that if initially this vector represents the height of the animal and this other here represents the weight now b1 and b2 those uh, don't represent anything that you can connect to the real world because now this transformation of the points in this new uh, space the coordinates here are simply linear combinations of uh, heights and weights but it just like that they don't have a real meaning in in your problem so that's only one point that you need to consider that you can create let's say uh, or discover new features that don't have a real explanation or a real meaning in your problem uh, another way to try to find the, the best set of uh, features is by means of evolutionary algorithms so remember that the, the main problem in selecting features is that sometimes you can have too many features and if you want to find the optimal subset of features uh, you cannot do it exhaustively because there are simply too many uh, subsets that can you, you cannot evaluate each of them so this is basically a search problem in a, in a large space and you can see it as an optimization problem in finding the best element in this large set that maximizes the performance or minimizes some error function and the evolutionary algorithms like this the genetic algorithm is a very good method for optimization uh, specifically when the, the function that you want to minimize uh, is so complicated that uh, you cannot use the standard calculus uh, tools okay and it happens that in problems with large sets of features like in the domains of uh, bioinformatics it is quite popular to run these algorithms to find the, the best uh, set or the optimal subset of features that you should include in your machine learning problem for classification for example so I'm going to explain uh, at a very high level how these methods work in general what you do is you create an initial uh, population well, this, is, this is the way it's called in, in genetic algorithms terms the initial population which is simply a set of uh, a subset of features so remember that you can uh, code in a vector of zeros and one a set of features so positions with zero could represent for example that you are not including that feature in that position and um, positions with ones uh, represent uh, that the feature is, is included in your set so this initial population you can imagine for example if you have 10 features you can imagine generating randomly 10 solutions 10 different subset of features which will be represented at, uh, as 10 different vectors of zeros and ones so this population this initial set of uh, vectors representing different in dif different subset of features will be evolved using some uh, functions that are called operators and the idea is that as you apply uh, iteratively these functions over this set uh, of uh, features 
after each iteration of the genetic algorithm, you will evolve or this solution will evolve to contain better subsets of features. And at some point, you will have a set of different combinations of features that are or that uh, lead to a very good performance in your machine learning problem. So remember, initially, this, this set of uh, solutions are randomly generated, so they are very bad. But as you apply these three steps, selection, crossover, and mutation, uh, many times, n times, here they, they call these iterations generations, you will end up uh, optimizing or ev evolving the population to, to get uh, good combinations of features. So this these methods allows uh, can be run in a square time. Okay, and the problem is that uh, sometimes even n square or in the case of exponential, of course, it's very difficult to to run, especially if you are talking about domains in bioinformatics where you have too many features. So. Um, in a diagram, you can imagine, like for example, this red vector. Y you can imagine it as a, a subset of features. So in this case, we can consider that the first feature is included. The second feature is not included. That's why we have the zero. The third feature is included. And then the lags that the last, uh, which is the seventh feature is also included. Okay, so this could be considered a solution to your problem. Another solution would be, for example, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, which in this case it would represent that we will include features 2, 3, 5, and 6. So the idea is that initially you generate several uh, vectors, like this red and this green, randomly. And the, the process of the genetic algorithm is going to discover which features are uh, good to include in the process. And in the, in the first step, let me go back to the algorithm. The first step is selection. So the idea behind selection is that you need to give a score to each of the individuals, to each of the solutions in your set. And uh, those which are good uh, for solving the classification problem will have a larger score. And those that are not, go not good to solve the classification problem will have a, a small score. And those uh, solutions or individuals that have a large score so they are good for the classification problem they will be mixed together to recombine uh, characteristics of them with the hope that the result of the recombination will generate an even better individual so this recombination is called crossover and uh, there are many ways to apply this, but the, in the simplest way, uh, there is one called uh, crossover in one point, like in this example here. You, you uh, get a pair of individuals, one is called parent one and the second is parent two. You uh, select randomly a position in the individuals that are, or are also called chromosomes. In this case, the position is this one. And what you do, you create a, a child one, which is here, that took the first part of parent one, which is this one zero one, and took the second part of parent two, which is zero one one zero, and you create child one. And you create also child two taking the first part of parent 2 and the second part of parent 1 and you get child 2 
and the idea is that those features that are good for the classification uh, will receive or will um, create child uh, children with uh, better scores than the parents of course sometimes the combination is bad and the child is worse than the parent and when you have children uh, solutions with worse uh, scores or worse evaluation the process of selection are going to uh, basically uh, delete those individuals because in uh, the process of selection will uh, give more probability of recombination only to those individuals that are good individuals with higher evaluation so this is the, the main objective of this operation of selection and there are also many ways to implement each of these operations there are many ways to implement them so in selection the idea of selection is to make pairs to select parents to to cross over to re for recombination but only selecting those individuals that are good you do the crossover and the mutation the mutation is an operator that is applied uh, to each individual uh, solution and the basic way to implement uh, mutation is once you have applied crossover and you have the children you visit each position of the children and with some low probability you make a change so for example if you are in this position and uh, you apply mutation and it happens that you uh, you have to apply mutation here you will change this zero by uh, one okay then you go to the next position and you ask should I apply a mutation here and most of the time you, you won't apply mutation because as I said mutation is applied with a very small probability so you keep visiting each position like flipping a coin and if the coin says yes in this position you need to make a mutation then you simply change if it contains a zero you make it a one or if it has a one you change it by a zero and th that's the idea behind mutation to like in in real life to to add some um, mutations that hopefully one of them will lead to a better uh, performance of, of the solution so this is a, a more elaborate way to generate subset of features but in general these algorithms are very powerful for optimization problems and if uh, your problem is really uh, large so you have uh, too many possibilities uh, this algorithm could be a, a good idea to implement so um, most of the previous techniques aim to return insight about the data by performing a large number of comparisons and selections so it is very time consuming um, despite the use of, of validation procedures it is possible that high correlations or low predictions errors are found only due to chance so sometimes the problems are so complicated that even if you run all these methods like cross-validation uh, using different subset of features in the end you can even learn correlations uh, and also you can learn uh, patterns that are found only like uh, like in a chance okay so um, to improve your chances to get a better set of features or in general a better model it is a good idea to use external validation sets so here I explain in cross-validation that you should have 
a train set and a test set but um, another way to be more sure that your results uh, are um, results that you can trust you can add a third set which is called the validation set so you can have train set validation set and test set so usually the validation set is used to um, during the training of the model you can use it, the validation set to decide when the training should stop the validation set it, it is never used for modifying the weights just to measure the empirical error of the model and to decide when to stop training and once you have stopped training your model then you go and test your model with the third test with the third set sorry which we said the, the the test set so you have train validation and test set so that would be uh, the most uh, secure way to run these algorithms instead of choosing uh, one particular filter uh, method you can actually combine different uh, filter methods so uh, instead of saying okay I will generate my features using only the results of PCA you can say I, I will use the features uh, that are suggested by PCA by, but I, I, I also going to use the features uh, that resulted from uh, a genetic algorithm for example so you can make ensembles of this uh, uh, filter selection using different filter selection methods so that's a possibility so since there, there is not an optimal feature selection technique and due to the possible existence of more than one subset of features that discriminates the data equally well model combination approaches uh, have been adapted to improve the robustness and stability of final discriminative methods so that's what I said you can use different uh, filter uh, selection methods to generate different subsets and then combine all these features in your final uh, feature vector with the idea to increase the, the performance of your model so uh, these are the most uh, common methods in terms of no, uh, model selection feature selection and ways to perform uh, cross-validation I hope this is useful thank you and talk to you later bye